I hope you got a few good video copies for your ads because this is the lesson where you are finally going to learn how to set your campaign objectives. In other words, this is where you learn online marketing. So let's begin and let's take it step by step as we've been doing so far. In your Facebook Business Manager, on the left side, click on More Tools, then click on Ads Manager. Now Facebook will take you to your Ads Manager. Here, click on your Ads Account. What we're going to do here is create a campaign for our ad sets. After that, you're going to create your ad sets and then your ad, which will be inside your ad set, which is sitting inside your campaign. Don't let this get too confusing. Just follow it step by step and watch how it all makes sense. So the first thing that we're going to do is create our campaign. Now, before you choose your campaign objective, you need to understand exactly what your campaign goals are. Your advertising objective is what you want people to do when they see your ads. For example, if you choose that your campaign objective is reach, then Facebook will try to reach as many people as possible for the lowest price possible as long as it reaches and they see your ads. Another example is traffic, where in this case, Facebook is going to try to give you as much of an audience as possible to see your ads and also click on the link that you have inside your ad to go and check out your website. If you choose, for example, engagement, then in this case, Facebook is going to try to find an audience that will engage with your ad which means like your ad or comment on it or share your ad. So if I'm liking posts or if you're commenting on posts, then Facebook sees us as people who like to engage with posts. And therefore, they are going to show us ads where their campaign objective was engagement. And you can go on with the list. If you go for video views, they're going to give you an audience that likes to watch videos and they don't just skip after the first second. If you're going to go for lead generation, they're going to give you an audience that usually likes to subscribe and leave their contact information. And if you go for conversions, which is usually the most expensive campaign objectives, this is where you're telling Facebook that you want them to find people who usually respond to call to action. For example, adding the product to the cart or purchasing it, adding payment information and so forth. My recommendation would be to go for engagement in the beginning because on one hand, engagement is going to show you if your product is interesting or not. What you're telling Facebook is to find an audience that will interact with my ad. So Facebook knows who their audience is that usually like to interact with ads. And this way you can see if your product is interesting at all. If your product is interesting, you're going to get a lot of likes, comments and shares of wow, what an amazing product. Where can I get mine? They're going to tag their friends and family to buy the product. And this is how you're going to know that your product is interesting and your Facebook pixel will gather information in the meantime. It will gather the data that it needs to gather in order to run more successful ads in the future, which can be conversion ads once you know that your product is interesting. So I hope that you understood why starting with engagement objectives is much smarter than going with conversion. So starting off right, go with engagement. On the bottom, on the engagement type, go with post engagement and then name your campaign. And since we're also going to create an ad set and an ad inside the campaign, we're also going to name them. You can name it anything you want. Just start with something so that you'll have a general name and click on continue. Now, as you can see here, the Doggy Dog Club campaign has been created. Now let's start configuring it. So you have your campaign name. Scroll down until you reach the campaign budget optimization. Now, if you have three videos for three ad copies that you're going to run, leave this option on for campaign budget optimization, which means Facebook is going to try to balance the budget between three ad campaigns and optimize them and see which one is working best. Once they see one campaign that's working better than the others, they're simply going to put more of your budget into the winners and less into the less performing ones. So if you have more than one ad set for your videos, leave this option on and then click on next. Now we're in the ad set settings. We are done configuring the campaign objectives. As you see, it really wasn't that hard. And now we're going to start configuring the ad set. So first you have your ad set name, which we already named. Now you have your budget and schedule. Like I've said many times before, our objective here is to spend the least amount possible while we learn to run successful ads. That is one reason why we are starting with post engagement campaigns, because first of all, it's cheap, but it doesn't matter that it's cheap. We still want to succeed. And our post engagement is going to give us an indication if this product that we're trying to advertise is an interesting product for e-commerce. So once again, we're going to do this on a budget and we're going to succeed at that. On your daily budget, you should spend between five to $10 a day for two to three days before checking out your ad and seeing if it's working or not. 
because in the first day or two, Facebook is trying to optimize itself more and more to try to find the right audience for you. One day is never enough to see if your ad is a successful one or not. The second day should start to give an indication, but the third day is usually the day where Facebook is already optimized and the ads are already giving you answers if this is going to work or not. And the difference between $5 to $10 a day is simply how hard you want Facebook to work to find this audience for you. $10 a day will give you much faster results than $5 a day, but at the end of the day, it really depends on your budget. If $10 a day for three days equaling $30 is too much for you, start with $5 a day and wait for three days to get results to see if this ad is working or not, which means your first ad is going to cost you $15. And really that is not a lot of money for everything that you are learning and implementing and also feeding your Facebook pixel, which will repay you in the future. So start with five or $10 a day. You can set a start and end date. My recommendation would be to leave this on because if your ad is working well, you don't want it to end after two or three days. You want it to keep running. So I encourage you to not put an end date, just leave it as it is. And you will be responsible for keeping track of your ads. You're not running 50 ads at once, so it's not going to be a hard thing to do. Next, we're going to configure the audience settings which means we're telling Facebook the type of audience that they want them to find and show our ads to. Now is the time to open up that audience research spreadsheet, which you worked on a couple of lessons ago, because we're going to use that now for the audience section of your ad set. So first things first in the audiences on locations, click on edit here, exclude whatever default country it gave you. Now, since we are going for a post boost engagement objective for our ads, it doesn't matter if we're choosing audience in the United States or the rest of the world. Our objective here is not to get them to buy the product, but rather to interact with our ads. And it's going to give us some good social proof for our ad, because once you'll have that post with a lot of likes and comments on it, you can use that same post with the social proof that it already has and create a new ad on it with new purchase campaign objectives to get Facebook to find audiences that will go and buy this product. And the reason why you would want to go worldwide for your post boost engagement and not just for your target audience, which is the United States is because this way Facebook is going to find the cheapest audiences in the world to show your ads to who will interact with your ad. This way you're getting the cheapest social proof and the cheapest testing possible to see if your product is interesting at all. So for post boost engagement, we are going to target the worldwide audience. Now you have to choose the audience age range. This is the part where you have to use your head and think what is the age range of people who will want to use this product? In my case, since it's a dog product, it's probably usually for dog owners. Dog owners are usually anywhere around the age of 20 to 60. Obviously, even people under 20 have dogs and people over 60 have dogs, but I'm trying to get the most and the most potential age range for the dog products. You can try to use Google to try and get some insight for the age range for the product that you're trying to sell. After you have the age range, you have the gender. So for example, if you're selling fashion and beauty products, then your gender will most likely be women rather than men. In my case, it's a dog product. Men and women both have dogs, so we're going to stick with all. And we're going to move on down to detailed targeting. And in this text field is where you're going to start writing down those interests from that spreadsheet. Now in this text field is where you're going to write as many audience interests, demographics and behaviors that you think is relevant for the niche that you are trying to sell. Not all of the things that you wrote down there will show up over here in the interests and behaviors. That is why we wrote down more than one answer for each question. So let's start off by copying and pasting here all of the audience interests that we have from that spreadsheet. You will do it on your side and I will do it on my side. See you in a minute. Okay, so I'm done writing down all of the audience interests from the spreadsheet to the ad set configuration. Now, if you look here on the right side, you'll see that you have a new potential reach. 76 million people is way too broad for what we're trying to do here. For post boost engagement, having an audience size of around 10 million people is just about enough to not go too low and miss out potential audiences and not go too high and waste money until you start reaching the right audience. So as you can see here, I have dog breeding, dog food, happy pets, modern dog and pet co. All in all, we have a potential reach of 76 million people. Now let's start narrowing down this audience to around 10 million. 
So the first thing that you want to do to start narrowing down is to go over the interests and see the size over here on the right side. For example, the size of audiences that like Petco is over 10 million people. Modern Dog has half a million. Happy Pets has 5 mil. Dog food has 48 million people in the audience size. So the first thing that I can do here is delete the dog food audience interest since it's way too huge. So let's start by narrowing down dog food by clicking on the X. Now it's been deleted from the interests and we're down to 24 million people who have all of these interests alike. Now what I want to do is continue narrowing it down, but I don't want to delete any more audience interests because I really believe that my potential audience is inside these interests. So the next thing that you can do is click on narrow audience. So what you're telling Facebook here is to find an audience that has an interest in these subjects, either one, two, or all, but they also have to like an additional interest which you are going to add here. This is going to help narrow it down because you're telling Facebook, I want people who like this and they also have to like one or all of these interests that we have up here. So if you're all out of interests, all you have to do is click on suggestions and Facebook will give you more suggestions on interests that are similar to the ones that you have up here. So you can either find an idea over here or you can think of one yourself. For example, I thought of dog lovers. And here there's an audience interest of 36 million, which is kind of big. But since we're narrowing it down, we're going to go down from 77 million to 5,400,000. So what I would recommend to do here is to add an additional interest called engaged shoppers. This will give you an audience that has engaged with a call to action button at any time in the last week. As you can see here, engage shoppers, people who have clicked on the call to action button shop now in the past week. So you want to show your ad to those kinds of people who are interacting with the shop now buttons and now our reach raised up to 13 million. 13 million is very ideal for the post boost engagement ad that we want to run. Now let's scroll down and continue with our ad set. Keep scrolling down until you get to languages. Click on the edit button. And here in the languages, you're only looking for English speakers. So click on English all. This way it will include the UK speakers and the US speakers. For us, English is English and we are looking for English clients. So once you chose English all, continue scrolling down onto the placements. Now the placements is where you're telling Facebook where to show your ads on their platform. So go ahead and click on manual placements. Now here we want to uncheck everything except for Facebook. But if your audience is a young audience, which means under the age of 18, you can leave Instagram on. So we're going to uncheck everything except for Facebook. And here you only want to be on the Facebook news feed and on the Facebook videos feed. This means that Facebook will only show your ad in the regular news feed and in the videos feed for people who like to go to the videos feed and just keep scrolling and check out all kinds of cool videos. They're also going to see your video along the way. Now on the next screen, you are finally on the ad. We're done with the campaign. We're done with the ad set settings. Now we're finally creating the ad. But that is enough for this lesson in this video because you've been through quite a lot. If there was something that you didn't understand in this lesson, please go back and rewatch the video. Once again, there is no shame in rewatching a video again and again. It's your knowledge that you are feeding and these steps are very crucial to the success of your store and the ads that you are running. Your assignment for this lesson is to create and configure your ad campaign, create and configure your ad set, and I'll see you in the next lesson where we are going to work on the final aspect of your ad, which is the ad copy, and then you're going to launch your ad. Great job on making it this far. This is the part where everything really gets hot and exciting. So take care of your ad campaign, take care of your ad set, and I'll see you in the next lesson.